Hello everyone, welcome back to Life After Work. Been, uh, I don't know, a couple of months since I posted a video. I can't even begin to go through all of the distractions I've had. So I'm going to try to catch up on some stuff now. Uh, this is Life After Work. My name's Solomon. Uh, if you're just visiting for the first time, please subscribe and, and like us if you do. And uh, to all my other subscribers and friends, uh, I'm back. Now, I'm not going to go into a bunch of stuff about Christmas because it's a long time ago, but I did get a couple of gifts that I'd like to share with you. One is this. Now, I can almost hear you through the computer right now saying, Excellent, you need that. Well, I do. So, I've been taking a look at it. Even haven't even had time to do that, so that's going to be useful. And now, what's going on here at uh, Studio A? Well, it's not like I haven't done anything. Uh, I had done some video and somehow lost it, so uh, I'm kind of starting from scratch right now. But things that I have done in the studio, uh, I had mentioned, I believe in the previous video, I was going to take my webcams and try them out and see if I could utilize these old webcams. Now, they're, they have Zeiss glass lenses. They don't have the plastic lenses, so they're fairly good. I have a new one. I'll turn you around here and let you see it. This one right here, it's uh, mountable on a tripod. It's got two microphones and it's high definition got that for christmas so i'm going to be using that now i'm i took one of my old ones and i am experimenting uh with this if i want to do some kind of a detail uh, picture i'm hoping i can uh, video through this uh, magnifying glass so i'll have the magnifier cam there uh, that should be interesting when I finally figure out how to get my computer open. going to start the uh, USS New Jersey battleship uh, I've been going through the instructions on it trying to figure out what I want to do first second or third now let's talk about modeling uh, and this is just from my standpoint because I haven't done it in years uh, much of it anyway the the process I'm going to go through is trying to do my research first. Uh, there are certain things, since it's a Navy ship, there are certain things I know Navy ships have. And I've been going through the model to, to see if the model has it. Uh, second of all, I since this particular model, and I'll let you see it again, since this particular model of the battleship is um, the platinum edition and comes with all of the the uh, laser cut brass the instructions actually start off telling you what to take off of to take off of the uh, the hull and that's going to be the first thing I work on so let me show you a couple of things right now And you probably won't be able to see these. I'll point at them, but I doubt you'll see them. There are several portholes and this thing right here. And it says take those off because you have etched brass for those. So that's on both sides. And then it's just going to be a whole lot of sanding and cleaning up along the seam line to make sure. Because there's, there's a couple of spots that are pretty pretty ugly like right there that need to be cleaned up but all in all it's it's a good model I'm not uh, not worried about it now what I probably will do on all of these portholes that I have to remove I'll probably take a little pin vise and drill those portholes out that way when I sand down the portholes I'll still know exactly where they were and then maybe I can put a drop of something in there transparent later on there are portholes all the way down this. Now when you start to do a model, the way I'm going to have to do it is I have to think about 
what do I want to have when it's finished? Um, and that's before you do the first thing. Do you want a ship, for instance, like this one, rigged as though it's at sea underway? Do you want it rigged as though it's sitting at a pier in port? Do you want to rig it so it looks like it's at anchorage? There, there's just a lot of, lot of things you want to think about because ships look different in port than they do at sea. Uh, in port, you can have all the lights in the world on it. It, it doesn't really matter. At sea, uh, when the sun goes down, white lights go off and red lights come on. It's just because you can't, the white lights will blind you at night. And red lights, you can sit there and, and it looks almost like daylight once you get used to it. But all it takes is, I mean, you can sit there reading books, but somebody come in and flash a, a white light at you, and you'll be blind for 10 minutes. You, you, it really is important that you know whether you're going to be in port or, or at sea. If you want to put lights on this, and, and I'm probably not going to do that, but if you put lights on it, you want to make sure that you, you get the kind to represent how you're going to portray this. Uh, and by the way, that pointer, that pointer I'm using is just a, a piece of pine skewer for grilling. If I need something bigger, I made this. That's uh, it's on a a cooking chopstick. It's it's what you cook with these big ones. I had a set of them that I, bamboo that I bought in in China, and I went ahead and notched that out. Put an arrow on the front so. For the bigger things, I'll probably use this to uh, use as a pointer. Uh, and I'll be putting another one on that other uh, chopstick because if I just have one and I misplace it, it'll take me a couple of hours to find it. If I have two, uh, well, it'll take me about twice as many hours to find either one of them. So maybe it'll get better. But anyway, that was uh, kind of a lark just so I'd have something to point with got that done then I started looking at personal issues my eyesight's getting worse uh, right now I sit here looking at the the camera and, and the video next to it and it's blurred I can't see it very well these are bifocals for me to see that I've got to go like that well that doesn't work and it suddenly occurred to me these glasses I drive with, I do general purpose stuff with, but I have a third strength, that's these. These are strictly for the computer. None of the rest of my glasses will work with the computer. These work perfect with the computer and literally nothing else. Uh, so that helps. I need that. So I, I got that specifically. But then on the, in the case of these bifocals, that lower lens, I went to my eye doctor and I said, make me a set of glasses with nothing but that lower lens in it. Everything here on this tabletop, I can work with these and see. I can look at the details. I, I, can, I can see the details. Uh, without these glasses on, I have to go like that with the others just to see that point on that. So, uh, you know, as long as is I'm going to be doing these this work here I need to be able to see so I got this I also have found I had to get one of these little flashlights because everything I have is black and I can't really see the details very well so I keep this I just pick it up turn it on plug in whatever I need to and turn this off and set it down so I'm just trying to get I guess you call it ergonomically correct I want to be able to see and work and do everything within arm's length and these glasses do it so that was a good move uh, and I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner but quite frankly it just hit me one day uh, the rest of the shop I am proud to say let me get uh, 
Yeah, here we go. The uh, the temperature outside. Oops. The temperature outside uh, this morning was 13 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 10 degrees Celsius. Inside this garage, with nothing but a little floor heater, a little unit heater, uh, it stayed at 13 or at uh, 21 degrees uh, Celsius and 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is one of our colder days. Uh, not to mention, and I will share this with everyone. Hang on a second. We're going to go move. that's not much snow it's still coming down lightly but underneath that is ice it rained late yesterday day before yesterday we had two inches of snow and that two inches of snow was washed away by the rain froze overnight and it's not going to get back up to freezing above freezing for two days so I'm staying in There you have it. Now, having that door open for that few minutes, didn't move the thermometer at all. It's still exactly the same temperature. I do feel a little bit of cool coming over here, but it's going away quickly. Um, and I'm actually not too worried about uh, putting that paint exhaust under that door and leaving the door open in that gap. Uh, heat does rise, cold does fall. Hopefully, I won't lose any heat, and unless the wind is blowing directly at the door, I don't expect it'll, it'll be much of a problem, and I won't be painting all day. It'll just be for the period of time it takes to, to prime or paint something, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, quite frankly, that's, a, that's just about it for an update today. Uh, I got to get busy and, and get some of this work done, and quit trying to fix things as I go but I still want to get these get my camera situation worked out and that just means I got to get my computer moved over here get these cameras hooked up test them do a little video work with them and maybe I'll get get part of that done today so I can put it on on this video that I'm going to put on uh, YouTube hopefully later today so anyway, I hope everybody's having a good year so far. Uh, I'm catching up on YouTube videos uh, from the rest of you guys. I honestly have uh, fallen so far behind. I didn't even turn the computer on for a long time. Just too many things to do, too many interruptions. So we'll uh, we'll get started back here in just in just a few minutes, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to get some things done. Anyway, thanks for stopping by again and not giving up on me because I've, like I said, it's been probably a couple of months since I've posted anything, but I'm, I'm going to get more regular than that now because I'm going to start working on the model. And, uh, and I'll also be pulling a couple of trains out that are, that are stored away and, and start looking at what I need to buy to get them upgraded because uh, I've got some fairly nice ones, I think. Anyway, you have a good day, and I'll be talking to you all again soon. Bye. Okay, guys, we're back. I've been working on the New Jersey. Uh, I had hoped that since this was a single hull, there wouldn't be a lot of work that had to be done to it. It's not like you get two halves, put them together. You have to clean up your seams. The fact is, even though this is injected as one piece, Guess what? You got a lot of seams. That's because the mold had seams. Now, if 
you look inside of this, and I'm, gonna, I'm hoping you can see what I'm talking about. You've got injector ports all over this. They injected from the inside so that you wouldn't have these showing up on the outside and have to be cleaned off. And they're everywhere, all the way back to the very back. Well, if you turn this over, I've sanded it already. You will see if you can see. Let me try one thing. Just put one of these lights on. If you can see it right down the middle, all the way down, there's a seam. That seam has to go away. Well, some of it was standing proud of the surface, so I took a sander. And by the way, you, if you're going to do this kind of sanding, you don't want to dig a hole out of it. Get something that lays flat across the whole area. That way, what you end up with is either it goes away or you have what I have here which is a trough right down the middle. Well that trough is going to be filled with some of this uh, fast drying Quadrant Products putty. Okay? Right there. The, uh, the back part here, now this is where there are Four screws are what most people, I guess, that aren't Navy, U.S. Navy, would call um, propellers. There'll be one here, one here. Well, they'll be out here, but they'll be coming out of this shaft and this shaft. And there'll be two more coming out of this shaft and this shaft. So all the seams that were in this, and they were pretty distinctive right here. I just sat there and sanded until... This became one with the universe, okay? Still taking some of this, but I have to be careful. I don't want to take off a lot of plastic to make a buried seam disappear. I'd rather get it down to where it's flat, uh, fill that with putty, take that down to it's flat, and then prime it. So there's a lot of work to do with that. And it's been slow, and, and you take into account, and I showed you those, those uh, uh, right here where, there's, where the plastic is injected in. If you go to the other side, every one of those has a divot. I can see them. You may not be able to see them, but every one of them has a divot all the way back to these at the stern. Uh, when I'm filling that center seam, I'll fill those as well, so that in the end, you won't see any of it. Now, what slowed me down the most was the bow. Now, I don't want you to think that there's anything wrong with that bow. It didn't look right to me. I looked at the pictures uh, on the internet, and number one, it looked too straight. These hose pipe openings didn't look correct. That was these, one on each side. And there's supposed to be one right in the middle. And it's not there at all. So that concerned me. I went back through the instructions because there's also supposed to be a raised piece on this, right on the bow. And it didn't show up till nearly the end of the instructions. So it's there. Now that's because this is an 82 model. If this was the launching model, that wouldn't be there. Uh, this is an Iowa class battleship and it was changed numerous times over the years. Now I've also got these places along the side. Now I'll show you the one on this side so you may be able to still see it right here. This has to be sanded off, filed off. This is where I've been taking it off this side, right here. Plus, back here on the stern, I've already removed one. Now that was supposed to be on both sides. Guess what? They didn't even have it on the other side of the models. That's good for me. So now I'm, I'm looking at this. I see these white spots here. That means there's stress where these plastic joints meet and this has been bent back and forth. I may reinforce that, I may not. I'm, the deck itself may reinforce it enough. 
so I have to get some more of these portholes off and well, just some more cleanup work. Uh, and I'll show you some more of the pictures of the New Jersey in just a moment. Now, another concern, and it's something that you have to think ahead about, okay? Um, let me turn this around like this. You really have to think about something like this because the deck has to go on. You have to take the pieces that you're going to put together to make the ship and dry fit them. Now, I would think most people would know that, um, but I do know some people who literally would forget about it. So I go in and I try to dry fit it. And I've done this several times. Now, dry fitting it isn't just to see if it fits. Dry fitting it is also to see how you're going to glue it together, how you're going to hold it in place, how you're going to make sure it stays where you put it. Right now, and again, I don't know if you can see it in these pictures, I've got these little bitty half round stubs in here that the deck will sit on. That is too broad of an area in here. I, I really get a lot of problem trying to get this. I can get the narrow part up at the bow, but when I start getting in the middle, the, the sides are flexible. They flip in and out. And if you put any pressure at all, it'll push it past where it needs to be. I discovered something. When I looked at it, these cross pieces here are not part of the model. They're just supporting it so it doesn't get broken in shipment or in handling. I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to cut a flat edge on them, make them the right size, and I'm going to fill in with these. They'll be even thicker and more pronounced than the ones that are in here, but that way I'll have more of a surface to mount this on. So that, that'll end up working out for me, I think, once these are off. The overall fitment isn't very good. When I get when I get these back platforms in, I begin to see problems with how they're not formed correctly. There's there's all kinds of stuff with them, and it's very difficult to get them to marry up exactly the way they're supposed to. And I can't fiddle with them when I'm trying to glue, so I have to make sure it fits perfectly, drops in place. I may have to. I may have to come up with some kind of an internal support that I can put in here, spread apart, and keep those uh, whole pieces just exactly where I need them to be. So I'm dealing with that. Now, I told you that there were, right up here in the bow, I'll point again, right up here was supposed to be an opening. I'm going to push that back a little, but right here, I'm not sure you can see that well enough. Let me get the big boys out. Here's the big guns. There's supposed to be one right in the middle. And it's not there. But guess what? On the deck side, the opening to the hose pipe is there. So I've already decided I'm going to drill out these hose pipes. And they're done at an angle uh, on both sides. They're not just straight in. And they come out up here on deck where the chain comes into. And though you can't see it, this has chain patterns on here. That's going to be ground off. I'm going to have real chains, the correct scale of chains. But to fill the opening from here out, I really do need a hose pipe. So I bought some eighth inch tube from Evergreen Scale Models. It's an eighth inch tube that's uh, 3.2 millimeter. It's only going to take a couple of little pieces, but that's all right. The only thing I have to do is make sure that the chain that I buy to go through this will go through it. If it doesn't, that's all right. I've got a slightly, slightly larger version, and it won't change the scale at all if I have to use these. But I'll try to do it with these, and even if I have to, since these are already tubes, I can take a little extra out of there. So I'll probably do that. But that way, my chain will go straight to my anchors. My anchors will partly have to be rebuilt with styrene. 
they'll go all the way back here around this various deck equipment. So everything here has to be taken out of the way except for what would be deck equipment. I can't put the hull on until I've got the main guns mounted. They have to be fastened from the inside. It'll just be too difficult. So I've got that yet to do. Besides, you know, if you're going to do a model, do what makes sense to you. If you don't mind that seam being down the, middle, the bottom, guess what? It's going to be like this on a stand. Nobody will see it. If you want to be an assembler, that's fine. I'm a modeler. I want to model it. I want it to be the way I want it to be. And I want to know in my own mind that it's got a good bottom on it. Now, honestly, folks, you got to be careful when you're sanding on these. And it all has to be sanded so it'll take a good primer. But if you, I know you can't see this, but all the way, the full length of this all the way around is a water line. It's a very, very faint line. If you sand that off in your preparation, you're literally going to play hell trying to get that line back properly with the paints. Uh, number of ways to do it. Uh, I don't want to mess up the plastic, so I'm not going to do any cutting or anything. But I'll probably find a marker of some kind and mark that line so that I can see it on both sides. So just be careful not to sand it off. I almost got into it right here, and I almost got into it right here. But as long as I've got a front and a back, I'll find that, that water line. That bow, I worried about. I've got that worked out. I went back. I'll show you some of my CompuCam photos. I think this is okay. I believe, I really believe that this bulbous part down here should be a little bit bigger to be in scale. I believe that these hoss pipe openings should be a little more pronounced. What I do with those in the future, I'm not sure, but I'll get there soon. I still have a lot of sanding to do back here, just a lot of it. Uh, so anyway, it's coming along. You know, it's pretty good. And considering that uh, I'm already taking into account the fit of the deck into it and all of that, I'll discover as I go along more and more. Now, don't cut anything out like these braces. Don't glue anything on. Just work the plastic at this stage. Take off what you don't want. Take off what the instructions say you're not going to need. Do the plastic work. Get the sanding done. Get the filler work done. Get the, the hull primed. You don't necessarily have to do the top, but get the hull primed. Then you can go to the next step. I can go to some parts of the next step right now because I can do some sub-assemblies of things that it doesn't matter when you do the sub-assemblies. So I, I may do that, except I want to spend what time I spend probably grinding and sanding plastic. Styrene in the nostrils is not the best thing in the world, but guess what? Probably going to happen. So anyway, that's where I am. I'm going to get off of this right now, put a couple more things on here because it's been a long time since I published a video, and try to get a video published tonight. I know, I think I said that before several times. I'm probably repeating myself. I do have a number of other things going on. I'll cover them a little bit on another playlist. But I'm, I am truly in line now to, to keep this going. And I will use some of my computer cam pictures to, to point out some of the things I've been dealing with. Other than that, I'm out of here. Okay, we're at the computer now, and I'm using my, my webcam. It's got two microphones on it, so I'm hoping it's going to pick up everything uh, really well. This is the first time I've done this, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. Uh, I'm hoping that the microphone will pick everything up. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trying this. Uh, I keep getting a message that the audio is not being picked up. So we'll, we'll see.
basically what I end up with in the end. The picture you're looking at is actually the launch of the New Jersey uh, back in, uh, what, 1942, 43? No, 42. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, it was December 7th, exactly one year after Pearl Harbor was hit. If you look carefully at this, and I don't know if my if my camera's going to pick this up, but if you look at this bulbous part of the hull down here, it looks almost as wide as the the nose of the the at the bow, right up at the at the stem. Uh, if you look at the anchors that are uh, actually just hanging, they've they've got them. Uh, standing ready. If you look at them, they're coming out and go down. It's just about the same width. So that was one of the things that was bothering me that on the model it looked too small. Now uh, I'm going to stop this for just a minute and go to a to a different uh, picture. I'll be right back. This is another picture of the bow, and I've actually got a close-up, uh, and that that close-up really indicates that there's supposed to be another opening right here at the bow. Well, on the model, on the whole model, there is nothing here. It also looks too narrow, and the shape of... of <clears throat> of these hose pipes totally different uh, it just it just isn't accurate now I'm not saying I'm going to totally redesign this model but there's some things that have to be on there also if you look at this the line coming down here it goes in turns and comes back out to this bulbous bow and it's much larger on the ship than it is on the model so I, you know I don't know what happened there's a possibility that uh, this whole shape was for one of the other Iowa class battleships and they just used it rather than, than changing it what you're seeing here is another view of that bow slightly off to uh, the starboard side if you look at this whole shape it it's, it's way out here but it does come down, it gets almost to the waterline and it curves back out all the way down this bulbous bow. Now the, th the thing is, if you look right here, it indicates that there is a projection out there and that's not on the model either. So I'm just, I'm really confused about what this hole is supposed to look like. If you look at, look at it like this, then what you're going to see is uh, it looks like it gets right in here and turns back out. It doesn't go straight down. So the absence of this nose hose and this curve that comes back out, I'm going to go back. Let's look at that uh, hull on the model again and see exactly what we think is going on.